everyone, this is my second video in the series on how Canadian government works. And today we're going to be talking about the Constitution itself. Now, when people think about the Constitution, many people think um, about an American-style Constitution, which everything has a place, everything has a section, and any if you want a question answered, it will be actually in the proper Constitution. Canada does not work that way. Um, Canada is Canadian Constitution really has three different components, and I'm going to talk about each one of them. Um, the first component which our Constitution has, and which many people uh, think is sort of it for our Constitution, is our written Constitution. So you have a variety of acts. Um, which are deemed to be constitutional, most notably the Constitution Act um, 1982, which contains Part 1, which is the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, um, and the Constitution Act 1867, which is a British North American Act. Now, these acts don't do the same thing as the American Acts does. Um, I'll begin with the Constitution Act 1867, or the British North American Act, as it's more widely known by. And that act more or less establishes Canada as a federated state, establishes the institutions of the federal government, the Governor General, the Senate, the House of Commons, the court system, not the Supreme Court, but the court system. And it more or less says that what the provinces do, what the um, federal government does, and that's it. The Constitution Act 18, 1982 really continues that, but it adds what's called the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which carries with it several different laws um, concerning to our rights, which existed before but they existed under an implied Bill of Rights um, through Constitutional Convention, which is the next thing I'm going to be talking about. Um, it all, the Constitution Act 1982 also provi um, provides a way to amending the Constitution within Canada without going to the British Parliament before they go to Britain. Um, it codifies what is and isn't um, constitutional acts in Canada and it basically says um, there's a few other things it does with the powers of the federal government versus the powers of the provincial government, but it really, it really doesn't contain anything too awfully much about how government run. Um, beside it, it codifies something which appeared in the Constitution Act 1867 about how we operate as a bilingual nation and further it says we have to it has to be our constitution must be applied um, in a multicultural framework um, the second type of constitutional act is the conventions what these are is these are unwritten practices um, which determines what happens day to day in government? Um, the most the, the most common unwritten practice is the prime minister and cabinet. If you read the entire written constitution, you'll see the prime minister mentioned once in all the written acts, and that's to call a constitutional crisis a constitutional convention once every ten years. That's it. If you want to learn more about what our Prime Minister does, you need to visit the unwritten documents which determine what you know our cabinet, what the cabinet's roles are, and stuff like that. Um, in brief, these conventions are passed down from our British model. Britain doesn't have a written constitution at all. Um, Canada does, and but we also have a British, British style unwritten constitution. 
which mainly determines the institutions of government um, and how they operate and how they function and mainly to do with the executive branch. Um, the legislative branch is more or less covered in the written constitutional documents. The third part of our constitutional um, document, our constitutional understanding is what's called the authorities of the constitution. What these are is these are scholastic exercises um, which determines what would happen if. These mainly have to do with the powers and rights of Parliament, which are, exist under constitutional convention and what they are. Um, they describe these authorities describe constitutional convention, and they sort of act as how it has been a new record, how they ha it has been applied in the past. The most notable of these is Eugene Forestry, which has about five or six books, which most scholars would say it's constitutional convention. Um, most notably, a book called The Royal Prerogative of Dissolution in the British Commonwealth, which deals with things such as pierogi and dissolving parliament, and how pierogi and dissolving parliament should happen. Um, our so the and Manuel Montpati, which deals with the authority of the House of Commons and how it has been applied, and how it could be applied. Um, if you want a really good read that um, is very simple, but it's boarding one of the authority, it's how Canadian government themselves being June Forestry. Put it in the description if anyone wants to read it. Um, but these these three types of document really determines how our government runs. Uh, most of these documents are unwritten and most of these documents are unlike anything you will see um, in a US style system. Our constitution, um, the, the, the Constitution Act 1867 is a very plain and simple preamble it's not um, such as the U.S. We the People. It, it's straight to the point. Um, a Canadian political scientist and, and a, a very good friend and professor of mine, Rand Dick, has said that it's very unimaginative, our Constitution, the preamble. I don't think so. I think it's it's Canadian. It's very human. Uh, it's very humble. And it's very simple, this is like Canada. Um, the Constitution Act acts um, in a very different way than the American system of government does. Um, we are very Canadian in the way we see things. So those, those are really the three main sources of our Constitution. Um, the rest of the videos in this series is how it's applied and what really is going on in Canadian politics. I really urge everyone to um, know, to learn more about how these things function. These videos really just tip the iceberg. Um, so the next video is going to be on responsible government and the confidence convention, um, which really determines who can govern Canada and how they govern Canada. Um, until then, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me on YouTube. Um, and I hope everyone have a wonderful time until we meet again.